this is a very simple setup if you're looking to do some gardening outdoors. You know, if you live in New England like we do, you know, <laughs> it's winter about eight months out of the year. So starting, you know, starting a garden obviously is much more efficient when you are able to do it inside first with your seedlings. Um, or you can wait later into the year, you know, May, even June, to where you can actually plant the seeds directly into the ground. Sometimes it's a little inefficient, especially if you're looking to do colder zones um, or colder growing plants like lettuce or spinach, anything like roots, onions. Um, so starting things indoors is always most efficient. Not only that, if you're able to control the environment, you can also get great seedlings that you can transplant outside just to make sure that you're getting excellent growth, makes that your, your produce or your, your total crop for the year, you get as much as you possibly can without having to worry about too much weathering outdoors. So that's pretty much where we've got. Andrea and myself, we bought this awesome little tiny indoor greenhouse off of Amazon. It was really inexpensive um, and it really kind of does the job. Now you can see there's about five little stands that you can fit. I would say, I don't know what, 30 plants on each stand, uh, which was great. We tried this last year. Now. The one thing that uh, Andrea and myself didn't do last year is invest in grow lights. We were hoping that the natural light of our home um, was sufficient enough to start to grow a lot of our seedlings. Now, one thing that we noticed because we didn't get a lot of uh, natural sunlight is that we had leggy seedlings. Um, that turned you know, pretty sour for certain things. Um, you know, green beans, um, cucumbers, carrots, some of the herbs, because they were so leggy, um, they didn't really survive the transplant as we moved outside. Now, like other really hardy plants, like tomatoes or peppers, those were fine. Um, but we did have to go out. We had to buy some more even after we had started. So it was a little discouraging. So this year, that's led us to looking into some grow lights. So after a lot of research, a lot of investigating, we decided that we were going to go with what was called the T5 LED grow lights. Um, these were the most highest recommended, especially for indoor greenhouses, someone who might even be beginners, novices like we are, um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, the T5s do not emit a lot of heat externally. So, you know, they say place these about, you know, foot to two feet between the top of the plants or your little seedlings, um, keeping the, or limiting the amount of heat coming off the light is going to be important. You don't want to have to burn your leaves or your little uh, seedlings as they start to grow up. So this was number one. Number two, these are also pink LEDs. So this gives you both the range of blue and red wavelengths, which is going to be excellent for having low light and high UV emitting um, light, um, particularly as you go throughout the course of the day. Um, so depending on what zone you're in, you want to obviously mimic the amount of light you give. So whether it's 16 hours on, eight hours off or 18 hours on, six hours off, however you feel comfortable. Um, that might be a little discouraging for people who might have to be more concerned about your electric bill. Um, these are 10 watt um, LED lights, so really uh, energy efficient. It's not really gonna do too much damage. No one's gonna be complaining about using too much electricity. So that being said, gonna just show you a, a little brief tutorial, how we set up our greenhouse, how we attach the LED lights, and really kind of what it looks like inside, just to give you an idea. Um, nice thing is, is because these are the 10 watts, we're able to put 10 of these in succession on the same strip without blowing a fuse. If you went with the 12 watt ones, you can only do about six lights in succession. Um, actually, fortunately for us, we really only need three lights, um, one for each stand here. Um, so it's really not going to be that bad. So we have some extras left over. If one burns out, we need to replace it or if we want to add in some extra grow lighting. Um, the other nice feature of these, they came with multiple different options for on how we wanted to hang these or install these into the greenhouse. Um, the one that Andrea and I myself went with were these really nice adhesives, um, double sided adhesive stickies. Um, they work great. The kit actually does come with some nice zip ties as well. You can feel the, the need to do that. The only thing I would do is be mindful not to put these over one of the lights specifically. You don't want to have, you know, a nice grow light and then one blank area because the zip tie is blocking it. So just try to be mindful of that as well. Um, if you're installing this, say, in a shed, if that's what you're using for your greenhouse, they do come with clips to where you can actually drill these directly into the wall. 
hang them from the ceiling. Um, so honestly, ordering these off of Amazon for the price, they were about 50 bucks for the whole kit. Really, really good option, um, especially for those home gardeners. Um, so I highly recommend these. Anyway, I guess to get started, I've already installed one of the lights on the top rack. Um, I kind of wanted to show you how we are going to connect these in succession, really install it, and then really what the greenhouse looks like. Um, so I guess I'll kind of get to that point here. All right, so one thing I will note is that because these lights are going to run in succession, depending on the width of your greenhouse, just be mindful. <laughs> you don't want to run into a scenario to where you can't actually plug them into succession because maybe it's too, it's a little bit too narrow. Um, fortunately for us, this actually worked out to be the perfect size. This is probably about, you know, maybe two and a half, three feet wide. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're preparing. Um, the other way to go about this is with the kit. They come with various different plugins. Um, these will go directly into the wall outlet. So if you can't connect them in succession just due to space, you can always consider doing this, plugging into a power strip. Um, but for the most cost efficient and energy efficient, I would try to run them in succession. So I've set up our last strip here. Um, what I wanted to do is make sure that the power strip one that we want is actually initially plugged in. I fed through the connection from the previous light that you already saw us install. Um, so honestly, it's just making sure that you take off both sides of the adhesive uh, uh, tape here, and then we can install. Now, Andrea and I are not experts. <laughs> this was obviously a lot of research, um, cross-checking, and even reading a lot of reviews on those that have much more experience than we have. Um, but you know, this is a growing process, so it's kind of just nice to, to do this all collectively, you know, and I think it also helps others that are really trying to be interested in starting out, maybe even doing with some indoor plants initially, before you kind of step up to the, you know, I guess, uh, responsibility and everything else that comes with starting some sort of outdoor growing system like a garden. Um, you know, some people have some smaller ones, you know, they do raised beds, they do it directly into the ground. They start with a couple plants here and there, um, you know, starting with easy things like lettuce or tomatoes, anything that might be hardy. Um, it doesn't have to worry too much about the exterior environment in order to grow. Um, but if you are looking to continue on and, you know, move forward with your stuff, I definitely advise, you know, or recommend even looking into a system like this. Ooh. All right, so now we've kind of we've installed all the lights. Everything's gotten all set. As you can see, you know, we'll set up our trays here. Um, these fit probably about 20 plants a piece. Uh, this year, we're looking at growing about 33 different varieties of vegetables um, and herbs as well, even some fruits, including watermelon and strawberries. Um, so we're getting a lot of space to get things started, especially because some of those start later in the year. Um, but really, this is going to be useful for those earlier crops like our lettuce, our spinach, our onions, things that we're going to start to grow in seedlings come February. Um, this way, at least we know for sure um, by the end of March when those are able to actually go outdoors, um, specifically for our zone um, in New England, uh, we can actually have them started from good seedlings, get really good growth, make sure they're nice and hardy. Um, so that we can actually transplant them outside in the necessary time. Anyway, now that we've gotten it all situated, I wanted to make sure that we put it exactly where we wanted it in our home. Uh, I do still want to keep it in front of a, a good window. This is a north facing window, so it doesn't get as much sunlight, but I think it'll be useful, especially using the purpose of building up some humidity. Um, so this greenhouse actually has a door that will close over in the front. We can zip, we can uh, close it up, zip it up, make sure during the day that at least some of the humidity that comes off from as we wanted the plants in the morning retains inside here. And then we can always open it up and get a nice clean breeze from the window. So just to kind of give you an idea of what the lights look like, just be mindful of where you place this. Obviously you don't want your neighbors getting the wrong idea of what you're growing because obviously just from the concept of it, it may, little, may look a little peculiar. Um, but I think the lights work great. This is just using three 
Um, you know, we're considering throwing on a fourth on the bottom tray, but we do have to keep in mind, we have a, a garden cat that we, uh, we keep indoors as well. Um, she's a little bit of a lard. So if we do have plants on the bottom, we have to make sure we really kind of watch out for her because those seeds we plant may end up in the litter box the next day. So just be mindful of where you're placing it at. But anyways, yeah, let us know, you know, you have any comments, uh, any questions on anything that we looked at. If you want some recommendations, we'll put a link to really where we, um, to the, to where we bought the lights on Amazon. You can check those out as well as the greenhouse.